Welcome to Canvas Projects, a virtual program offering from the Pflugerville Public Library. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian here with another fun craft geared for ages 12 and up for you to complete. Those who registered through the library calendar can pick up material supply kits, and for everyone else watching, we hope you give these techniques a try. Let's get started on this month's project. Here we have the material supply kits this month coming in a gallon plastic bag. Um, we have our canvas base. This is just an 8x10. Um, um, additionally, in the kits, we've provided some faux leaves, a little bit of ivy, and some more eucalyptus type leaves. Um, for this project, if you have the ability, um, we would actually recommend going out and finding some um, real leaves of uh, plants that are available to what kind of plants you are pulling leaves from so that you're not getting something that is uh, poisonous or that you are allergic to. Um, additionally, a uh, paintbrush and we've got acrylic paint to use for stamping with the leaves. The colors that I've chosen, a little bit, uh, maybe not traditional. I mean, I've got a brown and an orange, but then we had this magenta here and I just thought it was really fun. Um, in your little paint cups, you should have enough that you could mix um, some of your colors up and create something a little bit more of an autumn color um, or just go with the straight colors, however you'd like. So once you have all your supplies gathered, um, we can go ahead and start this project. Go ahead and start this project. All right, all of my supplies are out. I've got just a little paint palette. You can also use an extra piece of cardboard or cardstock if you'd like um, to pull out some of your paints. I pulled out probably 90% of each of the colors. Um, some other items you might want, um, just a little cup of water and a paper towel to um, clean your brush. If you've done pre previous crafts with us or have additional brushes, you may just want to grab a couple of extra um, so that you don't have to necessarily clean your brush between colors. Um, totally up to you. And then the other thing, um, if you do want to go with a little bit more of um, a design, you might decide to get a pencil so that you can kind of uh, draw on ahead of time what you might be interested in. Um, in one of my examples here, I actually basically freehanded the uh, tree trunk and branches later, um, but I could have just gone ahead and kind of sketched on ahead of time where I wanted um, each of those branches to kind of be and then that would have helped me um, as I went forward with my design um, But for this tutorial video, I'm gonna go ahead and go through just kind of what each of the um, leaves look like um, so these are just uh, I think it was a eucalyptus um, Type leaf that we got and they're faux leaves um, so they're not quite as waxy, um, they're just a little paper leaf, um, but they do have on the back the um, kind of spine of the leaf that um, you would be able to use. So you have the choice of either painting on the back side um, or painting on the front side, depending. Um, so I'm just gonna go with straightforward colors for this first part. So let's take a look at how this eucalyptus leaf might look as we um, put it down, stamp it on our canvas. So I am just doing a pretty significant, um, not kind of puddling or gooping of the paint, but just a solid um, amount of paint on my paintbrush, you can see there, and then just coming in and putting it onto my leaf. And I'm actually attempting to avoid putting just paint right on top of those pieces as I go through because I kind of want to see them as a void in the paint so um, they won't be seen although very likely they'll come across so I've got a, a pretty good layer of paint on my leaf here 
Um, again, you can see I'm not wearing any gloves um, because I plan to stay fairly close to on canvas with this particular video. I also haven't put anything down on the table, but it's acrylic paint. You're gonna wanna make sure that either you've covered your clothes and your workspace um, and your hands if you would want to. I mean, you can see I already got some orange paint on one finger and some pink paint on another. Um, it'll wash off your hands, less so your clothes. So I'm just gonna lay my leaf down and really press in on each of those parts, making sure that I get the paint transfer where I want it. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick my leaf up beautiful so you see there i've got just those little lines showing the inside of the leaf i could go ahead and try a second stamp but you'll see i'm going to get much less definition the more times i go through with each of these leaves um, really to get the best result i would want to put paint on pretty much in between every single one so there's an even lighter one so i'm going to take that leaf and i'm going to set it aside on my paper towel there so I don't get any paint. Now these ivy leaves that we got were a little bit bigger. Um, so on our eight by 10 canvas, you're really um, covering a lot of real estate with a leaf this size. Um, so totally up to you whether you use it. Again, it's got that plastic veining kind of on the back. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the front side um, and we'll take a look at how that looks. I'm gonna put that down there. See, I didn't cover my workspace and I've already got paint on it. But quick enough, it'll just kind of clean right up. All right, let's see. We'll do the orange on this leaf so that hopefully we get a good visual. I do like this leaf because it's got kind of the um, interesting edge to it where this is more of a smooth edge. And because I'm not too worried about those spines on this side, I'm just kind of going for it. Getting a little bit of paint on my fingers, of course. <clears throat> and if you leave more of the stem on the leaf, it kind of leaves you with a little bit of something to hang on to. I pulled off a little bit too much, so I don't really have any place to hold on other than the leaf itself. So I know I'm going to get paint on me for this one. All right. And now to those edges. Got my water cup for now. And so with these ivy leaves, I've got, let me tilt it up here while I hold it down. You can see that top part because of the sides of the leaf isn't exactly pushed down all the way. So I'm really gonna have to come through and push down all along those edges. All right, I think I've gotten just about every part pushed down. All right, now I'm gonna come back up. And so with this example, I didn't have those um, there to kind of give me my areas. Um, so really it's a bit more kind of abstract of the leaf using this side. Um, and I can definitely come back in and kind of bring those pieces. But I do also like that it's almost additional veining that goes through here where the paint um, piles up. So that is definitely a technique and a look that you can go for as you're doing your leaf stamping. And here I'm just using my brush to kind of fill in those voids if I want to. And I've got enough paint in here that I can definitely do that. But some of the voids really are pretty awesome. So let's take a look at some of the leaves that I collected from outside. Um, one of the things you want to think about is how waxy some of these leaves are going to be a lot waxier than others and those are the ones that are really going to transfer paint pretty beautifully. Um, so this side is a little softer, this side is a little waxier. Get a brush here. Oh, it's got a lot of orange paint on it still. 
really clean that off. Alright, that's a little better. Let's go brown with this guy. And so the same, I'm just going to paint, put the acrylic paint on. And with this one, I've got a little bit more of a stem to hold on to. So then I can come right here. The um, faux leaves are going to be last a lot longer. You'll also really honestly be able to kind of clean them off with water, dry them out and reuse them. Um, actual leaves are not going to be as reusable. So we've got there one of those leaves. Uh, let's try one of these guys. This is probably the waxiest leaf that I collected from outside. And this one I'm going to go on the back of the leaf. A little bit too much water in my brush. There we go. Much better. Alright, let's do this little guy up here. So I can definitely tell that I had water in the paint as I was doing that one. Right, let's see what else we got. Um, one of the leaves that I, tr I tried to do, which I thought would be really cool, was um, we have some dandelions outside of the library. And um, those leaves just looked really cool to me, especially ones where you could tell like squirrels and stuff have been eating. They had just the most interesting edges. Um, however, those really were not sturdy enough for me to um, bring in and paint. They were really going to kind of leave behind a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and mix some of my paint and get myself another fun color. Adding that brown really kind of brings it to a little bit more of a, I felt like a fallish type color. It's really this, it's kind of fallish type color. It's really this, it's kind of a fun one. I liked these that we have outside. So I'm going to do the inside. Oh, that's a really cool, almost terracotta color. All right. I thought this was, this pointier leaf was, would be a fun shape. So really the possibilities for a project like this, for stamping, uh, leaf stamps, canvas are pretty much only limited by the type of leaves that you have and the type of design that you'd like to create. All right, so there's that guy, and I'm just gonna leave him set for a while. Found these other, another leaf that has kind of a cool um, serrated almost edge to it. Let's see how this guy looks. Let's bring in some more orange. A little bit of our almost terracotta into the orange there. Give us a little bit more of a pumpkin color, maybe. That's a good fall color. Oh, yeah. Going pretty close to the edges. One of the examples I saw for a craft like this was really cool using um, kind of a more smaller pointed leaf. They just went from the inside and then kept going out, um, alternating colors even, and it just turned out really amazing. Um, I do like my example with the tree. I thought that was really cool as well. Um, if I was slightly better artist, I may decide to put some um, birds on that one. So I can tell with this particular tiny, tiny leaf, I've got a little bit of a um, bit of the paint coming out from the side, but I have a feeling uh, it translated okay. And then again, I've got my other brushes and I can come through. And even once that kind of dries, I mean, I haven't given it the time to dry. So hopefully this tr translates. I can just go ahead and add some of that leaf veining right in as ap after the paint dries. I would definitely recommend, I'm obviously not for this video, but definitely recommend waiting for your leaf to dry 
So even here on this first one I did, I can come back through with a smaller brush and give those feigning just that extra little hump there. And even, especially this eucalyptus one like this, um, doing a cross, I could see that as a whole tree in itself um, with your, your trunk coming down and then that kind of stuff. So I've got this one I had left here for a while. I'm gonna pick that up and that is such a cool color. So you have so many options um, with how to make this project your own, stamping onto a canvas with leaves. Um, we hope that you enjoyed this technique and it's something you give a try to. Um, you can definitely even take some paper um, or something else and test out a few before you commit to a particular design on your canvas itself. So as always, we hope that you share with us the photos, share with us the photos of your completed project, and we hope you enjoyed this. And we look forward to the next Canvas projects.